Hey guys, this is Cody with Pool Parts To Go. We're here on the bench with one of the Black & Decker and Ground Variable Speed Pumps, and I'm gonna go over how to replace the driver, the VFD on this unit, which is this big great brick on top. Uh, really, the only tools you need are gonna be a Phillips head screwdriver, a small pair of pliers, and some way to check voltage. Uh, we're gonna start by using the voltage tester, and we wanna make sure that we've already shut off power to the pump by checking for voltage on both incoming lines and I'm getting nothing and nothing, so we are good to go on that. Uh, we want to disconnect the power from the pump, and I am using a uh, test bench, and so my wiring isn't quite exactly the same as yours probably is at home. But we got the wires off. We want to disconnect our electrical connector on the unit. And then we are going to need to reuse the electrical connector itself. So we want to take that guy out and set him aside. Once we have the power disconnected, we can work on removing the driver itself. So we want to start by removing the four corner screws. And with those four screws removed, we can pull off the top of the driver. And you can just set this apart, part aside gently, uh, but since I'm doing video, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect it. There's this little corner cable that we just pinch and unplug, and then we can set this aside. Once we have the top off, there are three screws we need to remove to take the driver off the motor itself. There's one in the back, and then two up front, and there's big old circles on the, uh, uh, through the circuit board so you can reach through and grab those screws. Once we have those three screws out, we can grab the driver and give it just a little bit of a wiggle, and it'll come right off. Uh, clean up any dirt, debris, anything like that that you have here, and then we can start working with the new driver. Now, the new driver will come with a little accessory kit, and what we get in here are we get a new electrical cover as well as a gasket for it, and then in here we have three little anti-vibration little boots. We'll have two long screws. These are two of the three screws that connected onto the motor. The third one's actually already inside the driver. And then we have the four screws. These are actually for the electrical connector, the four small screws. So we can take our new driver and we can set him kind of halfway on. Don't worry about getting him actually connected because our first step is to remove its cover. And same thing, you can only set this aside gently or squeeze this white connector and wiggle it up and you can disconnect it that way. And as I mentioned, one of the screws will already be uh, inside of the driver, this bottom right one. We wanna turn this guy over and we have the three spots where the screws go. These are where those three little uh, booty things go. And these are so whenever the motor is running, these absorb some of the vibration. And then once we have those on, we can flip it back over. And you see there's the three uh, connectors in there. And then there's this big block on the motor itself. Those are going to make together. You'll kind of feel them make contact. And as you push it down, you'll feel that connection starting to engage. And from there, we will put our three screws in. And it's good to just get each of them started before you drive any one of them home. Because as soon as one of them's tightened, it's going to kind of twist the driver a little bit. So we want to get all of them just in a couple of turns. Once we have them started, we can go back and get them nice and hand tight. From there, we can take our cover with the keypad Reconnect this cable and it'll give you kind of a nice audible click whenever it goes. And then set the cover back down and then tighten the four corner screws. Same thing as before, it's good to get them all a little bit started before you crank any of them all the way down. And also, the keypad, if you notice, the first one I had facing towards me, this one is the default facing back. If you ever want to rotate those, you can actually just pull these two screws out on the side, lift up on the keypad, 
You want to make sure that this gasket is still fully in its groove all the way around. And then you can turn this keypad to face any one of the four directions that you like before screwing it back down. Uh, do be careful doing this because if you over tighten these, you will crack the black, of the, the black side of the keypad. So you just want to get these nice and hand tight. And then really all that would be left would be reconnecting your power. I'm going to save all watching me do that just because uh, a test bench setup is a little bit different from what you'll be doing in your own backyard. Uh, but it'll just be a matter of reconnecting the electrical connector you're using, screwing it back in, feeding your wire through that, and then reconnecting them onto the same terminals. Uh, the green wire will always go on the green ground screw, and then the other two wires are interchangeable. It doesn't matter which one goes on the top and which one goes on the bottom screw. And of course, if you'll ever have any questions, uh, just send me a message and I'll be happy to help.